Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Gemini TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. Welcome back to the latest Tazian news and here they are. Over 100 Rohingya refugees landed in Indonesia. Rohingya refugees landed in Indonesia Aceh province in early hours and sought help from local residents and social workers at the scene. Authorities were unsure how long the 114 refugees, including 35 children, have been traveling on their boat and arrived in Biruen, Aceh. Mukhtar, a local villager, said the Rohingya refugees walked into his village to ask for protection. A volunteer with a social work organization told reporters that some of the refugees needed medical assistance. In December 2021, Indonesia also allowed over 100 Rohingya refugees, majority women and children, to land despite initial hesitancy. Indonesia is not a signatory to the 1951 UN Convention on Refugees and is predominantly seen as a transit country for those seeking asylum to a third country. Rohingya Muslims refugees from Myanmar have for years sailed to countries such as Malaysia, Thailand and Indonesia between November and April, when the seas are calm and hundreds of them came to Aceh in intervals in recent years. ASEAN Special Envoy arrives in Myanmar for first visit. A special Southeast Asian envoy started meeting to aim at ending hostilities in Myanmar. A visit met with anger from opposition groups who said it shows differences to its military rulers and disdain for the will of the people. Myanmar state media showed footage of the envoy Prak Sokom meeting junta head Ming Holeng at the beginning of three-day trip which aims to start the peace process the generals agreed to last year. Some ASEAN members are frustrated over the lack of progress and have barred the junta from attending summits. The military-controlled MWD media said on its Telegram channel that the talks between the two included discussions on the status of the ASEAN peace plan and humanitarian assistance. According to some independent Myanmar media, Prak Sokhom from this year's ASEAN host country, Cambodia, will also beat unspecified political parties, but talks with representatives of ethnic minority armies have been cancelled. Myanmar spiraled into chaos after a coup 13 months ago, which ignited protests and strikes nationwide and hostilities in the countryside between troops and armed groups allied with Suu Kyi's government. Japan Prime Minister strongly opposes Russian halt to peace treaty talks. Japan reacted angrily after Russia withdrew from peace treaty talks with Japan and froze joint economic projects related to the disputed Kuril Islands because of sanctions imposed by Tokyo over Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Russia and Japan have still not formally ended the World War II hostilities because of the standoff over islands of Japan's northern, most in island of Hokkaido, known in Russia as the Kurils, and in Japan as the northern territories. The islands were seized by the Soviet Union at the end of the World War II. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida said this entire situation has been created by Russia's invasion of Ukraine and Russia's response to push this onto Japan-Russia's relations is extremely unfair and completely unacceptable, adding that Japan's attitude towards seeking a peace treaty were unchanged and it had protested the Russian move. Japan has imposed sanctions on 76 individuals, 7 banks and 12 other bodies in Russia, most recently and included defense officials and the state-owned arms exporter Rosoboran Export. Implementation Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership in Malaysia spurs optimistic trade outlook. The implementation of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership in Malaysia has spurred an optimistic China-Malaysia trade outlook among Chinese experts and exporters. According to Yu Zirong, Deputy Director of the Chinese Academy International Trade and Economic Cooperation said the agreement implementation will create more beneficial conditions for the two countries to deepen cooperation in the fields of industry and supply chains. Yu believes that the agreement will in particular benefit Malaysia in developing digital economy, which has already had a solid foundation in the country as the Malaysian authorities have continued to improve its digital infrastructure over the past few years.
The Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership RCEP, introduces unified e-commerce rules and trade facilitation clauses which will further explore the room for China-Malaysia cooperation as cross-border electronic commerce, digital transformation of traditional enterprises and digital infrastructure construction. Over recent years, Qingzhou City of South China's Guangxi Zhuang Autonomous Region has invested heavily in the construction of an interregional industry chain for processing and exporting edible birds' nets and the implementation of the RCP in Malaysia, which is a major importer of the product, has spurred market optimism among exporters and processors of edible birds' nets in Qingzhou. In Qingzhou's neighboring city of Beihai, many enterprises have also expected more benefits brought by the agreement. The RCEP is a free trade agreement in the Asia-Pacific region between the 10 ASEAN states, namely Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand and Vietnam, and five of the free trade agreement partners, Australia, China, Japan, New Zealand and South Korea. With the entry into effect of the agreement in Malaysia, the RCEP has taken force in 12 of the 15 signatory countries. The deal is yet to take effect in Indonesia, Myanmar and the Philippines. Malaysia is China's second largest trading partner in ASEAN, while China has been ranked as Malaysia's largest trading partner for 13 consecutive years and according to the Customs Statistics the bilateral trade volume between China and Malaysia was 29.45 billion US dollar, a year-on-a-year -year increase of 28.1%, which was 12.2 percentage points higher than overall growth rate of China foreign trade in the same period. The 15 member countries of the RCEP account for about 30% of the world's population and GDP, making it the largest trade bloc it was signed at the Vietnam-hosted virtual ASEAN. Philippine assumes stress turned plastic items into gowns. Filipino Lenora Buenviaje has been making dresses and gowns out of newspapers, plastic wrappers and rice sacks for the past seven years, believing the wearing recycled trash can be both economical and fashionable. Using a conventional food-operated sewing machine, the 51-year-old seamstress stitches and weaves different plastics and sacks into inventive and fashionable frocks and gowns, others complete with headdresses made of straw. The recycled materials used for each dress would depend upon the request of her clients. Her dresses sell for $30 to $50 and are used in debuts, weddings and even in competitions. When Viaje says her designs use recycled materials are night catchers especially in local fashion events. When Viaje hopes in-person fashion shows and competitions will return to how it was before the pandemic, she aims to organize fashion events herself to showcase and inspire others to create clothing out of ordinary recycled materials. Japan offers aid and COVID vaccines to Cambodia. Japan pledged to offer Cambodia about 428 million in aid and 1.3 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines through the COVAX Global Vaccine Sharing Program. The pledges were part of several agreements signed by Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida and his Cambodian counterpart, Hun Sen, during Kishida's visit to Phnom Penh. Japan will provide a support loan of 45 billion yen or $378 million and grant aid through contribution to international organizations of 6 billion yen or $50 million. Joint statement said Kishida also expressed support for Cambodia's democratic process, such as holding elections in a way that reflects diverse voices from Cambodian people, through projects such as the promotion of dialogue. In addition, Hun Sen said he appreciated Japan's support and expressed to make further efforts to embed the outcomes of their agreements into the Cambodian society. Hun Sen, who was presided over a broad crackdown on opposition, civil society and the media that began in the run-up of 2018 elections, has in the past said he planned to rule until he felt he should stop. And that's the wrap-up. Have a nice day. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you, Jules Posu, for wardrobe, and have a nice weekend, everyone. Bye.